Upgrades. Who doesn't like a good upgrade when the enemies are getting tough and you could use a little bit of a boost? Now, creating an upgrade system could be pretty straightforward and simple if you don't have very many units or upgrades. You just need to boost the speed of a spaceship, you just change the value of a variable. But if the number of stats and units and upgrades starts to increase, the need for a robust upgrade system becomes more obvious and more clear. So just like I did with my stat system, I want to share how I've created my upgrade system, which is closely tied to my stat system, in hopes that it will spark some ideas for you to create your own upgrade system for you and your project. But before we get too far into this video, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Nova UI. Nova is a new kind of UI framework made for Unity developers, designers, and creators. Nova brings modern UI tools and features directly to the transform and prefab workflow you use every day in Unity. If you watch any of my recent live streams, you know that I made the switch from Unity's built-in UGUI to Nova UI, and I've been loving it. For me, the ease of use in creating adaptive layouts or adding visual polish with drop shadows, borders, and gradients, all within Unity, won me over almost immediately. Nova has joined the selective and short list of assets that I want with me in every project that I start. Nova also has a flexible data binding system, so now adding dynamic lists and grids to your UI only takes a few lines of code. So even if you're not an experienced developer, you can easily scale your UI beyond a few static elements and not worry about the performance of your UI. Build your UI better, faster, and easier than ever before with Nova. You can try every Nova feature in the Unity editor for free, so check it out in the Unity Asset Store or use the link in the description below and see if Nova meets a need for your Unity project. And for the two weeks after this video is released, Nova will be on sale with a huge $100, yeah, $100 discount in the Unity Asset Store, so make sure you check that out. Just like my stat system, I wanted my upgrade system to be based on scriptable objects. They provide asset level data packages that allow for easy workflow and frankly, I just like them. And just like with my stat system, I've continued to make use of Odin Inspector to allow the serialization of dictionaries and access those dictionaries in the inspector. If you don't have Odin Inspector, you can use the same workarounds from the stat system to use lists instead of dictionaries. I don't always love using inheritance, but in this case, I've chosen to use it as I have several varieties of upgrades in my project. For this video, I'm going to show the inheritance, but I'm going to stay focused on implementing an upgrade to alter the value of a particular stat type. If you don't have the need for different types of upgrades, my recommendation would be to stick with a single non-abstract upgrade class. The base upgrade class is an abstract class because for me, each type of upgrade will need to implement do upgrade slightly differently. And I don't want any instances of the base upgrade class in the project itself. The class also defines some basic properties such as name, description, cost, and an icon for the UI. However, all the real functionality comes in the stats upgrade subclass. Here I define two important collections. The first is a list of the units that this upgrade is applied to. Notice that it's actually a list of stats objects, which are themselves scriptable objects and not the prefabs of the unit objects. To use this, I simply drag in the stats scriptable object for any unit that I want to apply this upgrade to. The second collection is a dictionary, but could easily be a list of the individual stats that are affected by this upgrade and the amount that the stat is altered. Again, I'm manually adding the items to define the upgrade. Then the real functionality comes from the do upgrade function, but even that is pretty simple. All that happens here is we iterate through all the stats to upgrade and call unlock upgrade and pass in the upgrade itself. And that's it. That's all the stats upgrade does. But to make use of this, we're gonna have to go back and alter the stats class we made in the previous video. So make sure to check that out to handle these incoming upgrades. Before we get into modifying the stats class, if you've read my blog post or watched the video on the stats system, uh, you may notice that I've implemented one of my final suggestions. That is implementing an additional dictionary for instance stats, for stats that belong to the, the object itself and not the type of the object. So for things like hit points and health, that's all going to fit in the instance stats, just so you know where that's coming from. To work with the upgrade system, the stats class is going to need a new list to track those incoming upgrades. It's also going to need a handful of new functions. First, we need to define the unlock upgrade function that was called in the stats upgrade class. This function simply needs to check if the upgrade is already contained in the applied upgrade list, and if not, add it to the list. Next, we need to modify our get stats function to take into account any potential upgrades. To do this, we first check if the desired stat is either in the instance stat dictionary or in the stats dictionary. If we find it in either dictionary, we get the base value for that stat and pass it into the new get upgrade value function. Inside this new function, we loop through all the applied stat upgrades and check if any of those stat upgrades apply to the current stat type. And we do that by looking for the stat type in the dictionary of upgrades to apply. Hopefully the code makes a little bit more sense than those sentences did. 
If we do find an appropriate upgrade, we apply the value to the stat. If the upgrade was a percent upgrade, math is a bit different, but the idea is the same. When we're done looping through all the possible upgrades, we return the value to the getStats function. I like this approach as the entire upgrade path is dealt with by the stats upgrade and stats class. Nothing outside of those classes knows anything about it or even cares about what's going on, keeping things neat and tidy. So that's pretty much it. The upgrade system is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. But just like the stat system, there are a few loose ends that you need to think about in terms of implementing your own upgrade system. So let's take a look at those. There's one problem in the current system which comes from using scriptable objects and applying them in the Unity editor. When applying an upgrade by adding it to a list during play mode, that upgrade will still be part of the list when you leave play mode, meaning you could accidentally ship your game with an upgrade pre-applied, which is less than awesome. This is the same reason I chose to recalculate the upgraded stat value each time the value was requested rather than simply setting the value. So this is the problem that I alluded to in the stats video. And once again, I'm gonna include a link to the Code Monkey video down below uh, where he talks about the ins and outs of scriptable objects and in particular why this is a problem with scriptable objects. But despite being a problem, the solution to this is rather straightforward. We just need to clear the list of applied upgrades either when we enter play mode or better yet, when we leave play mode. Now, there is no lifetime functions for scriptable objects. Nothing like on enable or on disable will get called automatically. So how you do this, how you implement this is largely up to you and how you like to do things in your projects. For me, I have a stats manager with a list of all the stats upgrades. And when I leave play mode, I'm just gonna loop through all those stats and clear out the applied list on each one of those scriptable objects. But to make my life a little bit easier, I am going to include an extra piece of code in there to grab all the stats upgrades out of my project and include them in the stats manager. That way, in case I create a new stat and I forget to add it to this list, I'm still covered. The code's gonna grab it out of my project files and reset all the applied upgrades. If you come up with a more clever solution to that, I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below or come on by the Discord and share your ideas there. I really would love to hear them. I'm sure you guys have more clever solutions than what I've come up with. The second loose end is an edge case where you might apply an upgrade to an instant stat. For example, we might have an upgrade that adds 20 hit points to a tank. Now, with no further modification, any other tank that's gonna get added to your scene is going to see that upgrade. But all the tanks that are already in the scene are not gonna see that upgrade because they've already copied the instant stats. Now, that may be okay, that might be desired, but for my project, that's not really the way I wanna go. So here's my suggested fix. It's not the tidiest, but it works, and it adds some potentially useful functionality down the road. I'm going to add a public non-static event to the stats class that will get invoked when an upgrade is applied. Any class that might care about an upgrade can then be notified, which could be useful for functionality such as sound effects or visual effects or any other player feedback, letting them know that an upgrade has been applied to a particular object. The only other thing I might add is that I've used Odin Inspector to create a custom editor window uh, to ease or smooth out the workflow of creating these stats upgrade objects. If you're interested in seeing that, leave a comment down below. Maybe we'll do a quick video on how I did that. Otherwise, I hope this was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. And until next time, happy game designing.